It's been over a year since the Dead Space remake shambled its way down a long dark corridor to terrify us all over again. And while it was cruelly robbed of Game of the Year by a little game called Baldur's Gate 3, and a few more besides, it kickstarted a desire to give the series the reboot it deserves. But did you ever wonder why we got a remake of the original instead of Dead Space 4? Picture the scene. It's 2013, you're EA, you've just released Dead Space 3, the latest instalment of the renowned survival horror series, and while sales and critical response haven't exactly been as good as they were for Dead Space 1 and 2, this was supposed to be a survival horror game, and you've put an army roll and some weird microtransactions in it. But you're still sitting fairly pretty, with decent review scores, and the top-selling game in the USA and UK for February, the month Dead Space 3 actually launched. Now, with all that context, you have two buttons in front of you. Keep the devs at Visceral Games working together and use their ideas for Dead Space 4, or, alternatively, cancel the whole series, disband the development team, and leave it to die. Choices, choices. If it wasn't obvious from the title of the video, EA chose the latter, dooming myself and countless others to be consumed by the great brethren moon that was the ending of Dead Space 3, forever wondering what the hell they were planning to do in Dead Space 4. So what gives? Was it literally just missed sales targets and a misguided idea that survival horror wasn't cool enough anymore? Or was there something more to it? What the hell happened to Dead Space 4? Now, if we're going to talk about Dead Space 4, we need to first talk about Dead Space 3. That's just how maths works. The ugly duckling of the series, it took everything we loved about the first two games and promptly shunted it out of the nearest airlock. In what was loosely described at the time as a way to reach a wider audience, read the people who were playing Call of Duty and not Dead Space, things were shoved into Dead Space 3 that really had no right to be there in what was supposed to be a survival horror sequel. Co-op multiplayer was added to the story, so Isaac Clarke was no longer stomping around tight and incredibly unsettling space station corridors entirely on his own, with only the sounds of his own feet and pumping heart in his ears for company. Now you had a grizzled former soldier to watch your back for you, those aforementioned claustrophobic and uncomfortable corridors were replaced eventually by much more open level design that took away a lot of the uncertainty that survival horror relies on. It's not scary if you can see a necromorph legging it at you from 50 paces in a snowstorm, and it might as well be a shooter when I can walk into a level and see necromorphs walking up slopes and patrolling areas from the high ground. And the microtransactions. The microtransactions never end! They may well have been the nail in this particular space coffin, giving players the ability to purchase more resources that they could then use to craft med packs, generic ammo that worked for every single weapon in the game, weapon upgrades and new more powerful weapons without the need to grind or even engage with the survival aspect of survival horror at all. It's against this backdrop that, in a series of events that was a surprise, it seems only to the decision makers at EA that Dead Space 3 sold less than half what Dead Space 2 managed and those aforementioned decent but not sensational reviews meant the series was no longer profitable and no longer able to justify the big budget spent on it and that would need to be spent on any future sequels. In a very old interview, former EA president Frank Gabor once said that ultimately you need to get to audience sizes of around 5 million to really continue to invest in an IP like Dead Space. Otherwise, it's just not worth EA's time, money or effort. Sales numbers are becoming an annoyingly difficult data set to nail down nowadays, but it's fair to say Dead Space 3 got nowhere near that 5 million number. Even Dead Space 2 only managed a little over 4 million sales over the course of most of its lifespan. And believe it or not, that was also considered a commercial failure despite the rave reviews and fans absolutely loving it. The experiment then had failed. An attempt to appeal to the widest possible audience had, once again, somehow against all the odds, pleased pretty much no one. EA's estimates expected Dead Space 3 to be the best-selling game in the franchise, presumably because it had soldiers and loads of guns and, of course, crucially, microtransactions in it. But ultimately, Dead Space 3's failure directly contributed to EA's year-on-year -year revenue loss in 2013, essentially killing Dead Space 4 on the spot. What should be obvious, if it wasn't already, is that this was all EA's mess to begin with. And it seems that the very heavy and clumsily handled swing to action rather than survival horror was basically going to continue even if Dead Space 4 had eventually loomed over the event horizon. Before Dead Space 3 even had the chance to burn up on entry and annihilate EA's flagship survival horror franchise on impact, there were reports that suggested EA wanted to move the series away from the survival horror genre once the originally slated trilogy was finished. For what it's worth, whatever anyone might say about it, they clearly expected Dead Space 3 to succeed and appeal to the more general COD and Battlefield audience they wanted a piece of, just using a horror game as the vessel for it for some reason. Even while Dead Space 3 was in production, there's clear evidence that Dead Space 4 was being planned for. 
a departure from the series it would have been, but it would at least have carried the story and the lore of the series forward. Supposedly, Dead Space 4 would have been more about scavenging to survive on an Earth ravaged by mining and depleting resources, as well as the small matter of those brethren moons rendering most of the population as hyper-violent, distorted necromorphs, and apparently we would have been playing most of the game with Ellie, rather than Isaac. I don't really want to imagine the reaction that that would have garnered at the time, and the DLC might have revealed that our favourite space engineer survived his last encounter with the moon and made it to Earth with Carver. But considering everything else that happened to the Dead Space series from there, we wouldn't have been surprised if it was revealed that having made it all the way home, Isaac and Carver crashed into the Brethren moons they met at the end of Dead Space 3, and that was that. In terms of gameplay, details are fairly thin on the ground, but according to the reports at the time, zero gravity sections would play a much bigger part, and as a result, necromorphs would be getting a redesign so they could hunt in zero-g areas as well. As if it wasn't bad enough we have to put up with the leapers and the lurkers, you'd have slashers throwing themselves at you just as easily. The crafting system was set for a huge rework, deserved after the travesty of Dead Space 3, but I've already got into that, stay on track. And supposedly you'd be able to build up a collection of ships that'd help you explore the more open-worldy elements of this devastated Earth. It sounds like it would've really lent into the survival aspect of survival horror, contrary to Dead Space 3. Not necessarily going all out in action, and honestly some of the ideas actually sound quite fun and interesting. But it was never to be. We would never discover where the Brethren Moons came from, whether Isaac and Carver survived beyond the end of the DLC, or perhaps, most heinously of all, what is Peng? Ultimately, plans for a fourth Dead Space game were abandoned, as the team disbanded to work on other projects, and the series was left to rot. Until, of course, the stellar Dead Space remake finally got us back on course. So all in all, Dead Space 4 is a tale of EA getting in its own way. A tale of missed opportunities, misread signs, and ultimately mismatched priorities between the publisher, the devs at Visceral, and those of us who enjoyed the Dead Space series for what it was. Thankfully, much like the necromorphs we love to cut apart, Dead Space is a game that refuses to die quietly. The recent remake released last January breathed new undead life into the series, and while EA Motive are going to be very busy working on a reported Iron Man game for a while, the commercial and critical success of the Dead Space remake has got to have EA thinking they could resurrect a series they once left to die. We may never have got the Dead Space 4 we deserved, but if a Dead Space 2 remake could one day match the hype of its original, and they finally give the go-ahead to make the Dead Space 3 that we should have got over a decade ago, well, never say never. Altman be praised. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more weird and wonderful tales from us about gaming past. And while we've got you here with us, why not check out this video, where we talk about why we never got Bully 2.